Right, hi guys. So today is just a really quick uh, demonstration on the difference between the frame rates that you can do with the RX10 Mark IV. So starting off with 4K, 25 frames per second uh, video, and then we'll move on to the 100 frames per second uh, HD 1080p video. We'll then go to 250 frames per second, then 500 frames per second, and then the final 1000 frames per second, just to show you the complete difference um, of you know different frame rates and how slow you can actually make things become. So starting off with the uh, 4K 4K video, and what I'm using here is some Smarties. I'm just going to drop them down straight into the bowl, so you'll be able to see. So anyway, so I'm not going to cut this at all. I'm just going to drop them in, and that's that. And that's that. Okay guys, we're now at uh, 100 frames per second now, so slow motion. So I'll be able to, I will be able to slow this down four times over the, um, the 4K footage we just had. So some more smarties. There you go, they've all gone everywhere. But um, it just shows you, you know, how the frame rate can actually be really beneficial. So when you're shooting high speed stuff at 100 frames per second, so someone running or a car passing or you know horse galloping or something like that, it's really quite handy, especially for normal uh, everyday footage. Um, obviously compared to the 25 frames per second 4K, uh, which is more of a cinematic kind of look. So now we're gonna move on to the 250, the 500 and the 1000 frames per second. So we are now onto the 250 frames per second. And you'll see the duration I've put on there, 36 seconds it's taken for the Smartest to drop into the bowl. Um, they're all slightly different, but it's just an example to show you how much slower we're getting as we move up the frame rates. So the clip is coming, becoming longer and longer and longer um, to show, actually, as we slow the world down as such. Um, it makes a massive difference, and it becomes a lot smoother. The more frames you have per second, the footage can become smoother and smoother and smoother. It also means you can slow it down more and more and more. So if you guys uh, watch the slow-mo guys at all, uh, which on YouTube I'll put a, a clip on there um, with their link and everything to their, their channel. Absolutely amazing. Some of the stuff they can do. Um, I can only do up to a thousand frames per second. Um, but they're looking at almost a million, I think, in some of their clips. Um, but most of the time they're sort of shooting 28,000 there abouts, you know, anywhere between 1,000 28,000 seems to be a good margin for them. But they're using an amazing camera called um, the Phantom and a few others. So, um, but there anyway, you can see on this one here at 500 frames per second, it's actually 1 minute 20. So the duration is almost well, it's doubled, if not more. Um, but you can see it's, it's as smooth, if not smoother, and there's a lot more information happening. You know, there's a lot more. You can see it bouncing around a little bit more because it's so much slower. You can see things happening. I mean, this happened over, I mean, as quickly as I could pour a tube of Smarties out into a bowl. That's happened, you know. Um, I try to pour them out relatively slowly, so you sort of uh, three to five seconds, I guess, it was the original um, period. And I've actually cut away on most of these clips half of the clip. <laughs> so the period of the seven seconds of recording time, I've actually cut away most of it so we don't sit here and watch nothing for a period of time. So it just shows you how slow we're getting. So that was at 500 frames per second. Uh, and you can still see one Smarty on the right-hand side of the frame still spinning. And now we're at 1,000 frames per second. You can see it's absolutely super slow. Um, they're hardly falling. Well, they are falling, but you know, at such a slow rate. But now you can see them really bounce around. The only downside with the higher frame rate, the more processing power you need, and also a lot more light. This was pushing the Rotolite AOS to its maximum, really. I've kept them down, all of the images down to ISO 100. Um, the quality is a lot better if I'm outside um, in some bright sunshine. Um, but I've done it, done it in con controlled conditions, so just in case the sun went in and stuff, I just thought, you know, I'm going to use the Rotolite AOS to give it, you know, um, the results were the same all the way through. Um, as you can see, they're, they're bouncing around a lot, sort of more slowly. 
but you can see the how much more they're sort of moving around and how much longer they're bouncing around. You can see the sort of ricochets and, and things like that, and just the falling down. I mean, we're talking they're falling about uh, about 70, 70 centimeters as they come into view, and that's how far they they fall down. So as that one there hits, there you go. So it's taken about six or seven seconds to fall down. Um, sort of the 60 70 centimeter mark whatever it was roughly um, as you can see some are chipped due to the, their height of bouncing around and stuff like that um, but I just thought it was a good example to show you the difference between 25 frames a second on the um, the, the 4k uh, video um, then up to the 1000 frames per second and just the quality change at 4k obviously you're using the full resolution of the sensor um, and obviously it's, it's brilliant, you know, the quality. The higher you go up, um, I have had to sharpen the thousand frames per second um, a little bit just to just to add that little bit extra sort of detail back into it. Um, but uh, other than that, you kind of can leave it alone, really. Um, it's still very impressive. I love using it, and like I say, if you're using it outside, um, you can get even better results. Um, you know, if the light's really, really good and really strong, because that's what you need. The most important thing is with high speed and slow motion video is lots of light. Um, and the best thing about the um, RX10 Mark IV is you've actually got full manual control over the um, camera in slow motion. So it means you can adjust your apertures, your ISO, your shutter speed to get what you want. So, for example, if you're doing an explosion, you can actually underexpose um, your setting so you don't get a blown out image of when the explosion happens. Um, anything from lighting a match, obviously from quite dark into bright, sudden bright light, um, once you've locked the camera it's 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 um it's not going to change the exposure or anything like that. So you can blow out or overexpose your, your footage very easily. Um, so you know it just makes a huge difference. The only thing I would say about the uh, 1000 and the 500 frames per second is quite often I shoot it at half half the frame so it's using three to three and a half seconds worth of uh, recording time rather than seven just because it takes so much longer to actually um, record it onto the card um, anyway guys I hope that was some kind of um, you know eye opener or whatever and uh, you found it interesting um, any questions about the RX10 Mark IV please ask below and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell cheers